Welcome everyone to part two of how many North American Grandmasters can I beat in a row. In the last episode we beat four. Let's see if we can make it five and hopefully more. Let's begin. Ooh, so first opponent of the day is gonna be Trigger. Now Trigger is one of the absolute best players I could play against on the NA server. I think he got top four in DreamHack North America. Hi, you. <laughs> I guess he knows because I'm not streaming. <laughs> If I if I if I wasn't YouTube, I'd probably be live on Twitch, so he probably knows. So there we go. Now I don't think he's aware of what strategy I'm going to be doing against him, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Probably going to be trying to do a. Let's see, his double gas too predictable. I'm not quite sure. I'm actually no idea if Trigger knows how I play or not. To be fair, because I I have played him against him a few times, but I feel like it's usually on stream. And on stream, I'm usually memeing a little bit instead of playing serious. If you guys missed the point of this series, by the way, I'm obviously going to be uh, playing pretty serious and trying to beat as many high-level players as I can in a row. At this point, our score is at four wins. Now, if you guys watched the first episode, the first game, definitely don't miss that if you haven't seen it yet. But, uh, you know, probably this show should have ended in just one game. <laughs> That's all I can say. Now, we're going to play an incredibly good player here and let's see what we can do. His MMR is a bit lower than what it usually is. So what I'm hoping for here is that he's maybe not going to play as strong as usual. That would be fantastic. I think I'm probably going to skip the SV. I don't think Trigger plays particularly weird stuff. Like if he was going for a proxy gate or maybe for a two gate or so. I think I would have to be pretty scared. But I think he just plays normal so I don't have to SCV scout or... I mean I'm probably going to scout around my base and do some stuff. No, I'm not quite sure what the best way is to approach this. That's actually a problem with me playing on the NA server here, is that I'm most familiar with all the European pros, and TVP is a very build order heavy matchup. So a lot of wins you get them basically by choosing the right build order and then executing it properly, using mind games to defeat your opponent. But with Trigger, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I'm not quite sure what like tech he prefers. If he's like a blink guy or a stargate guy, I'm not quite sure. Now, I hope this SCV does not die to RNG. Okay, it was it was pretty close there. Uh, I'm just going to use this Reaper to kill it, pretty much. Um, glad I didn't lose that. That would have been a rough start. I wrote... He surrendered already. There's a GG. I'm always surprised when people uh, use this GG spray, actually. It feels like it's way more... You know, there's a lot of cooler sprays out there. My favorite spray is one where... Uh, there's actually, like, a silver medal. Which is just hilarious. Like if you're playing a 1v1 again, you post a, you know, a silver metal spray on your opponent. It just feels really funny. I once did that in a tournament to Max Packs. I remember I was streaming and I was just having a good time. And I would spray the silver medal on him in every single game. And it was actually the finals of a tournament. And I actually did win. Which I thought was hilarious. Because no one ever uses the sprays. I think people are afraid to be bad mannered or whatever. But I feel like as long as you use it in a playful manner, uh, there's nothing wrong with it, right? I'm gonna go with three units. Now, this map is actually super good for double Reapers, by the way. Uh, because it has two Reaper jumping spots. So, unless I mess this up horribly, I should be able to get a guaranteed scout, I think. I don't think I made a depot, right? Oh, I actually forgot my depot. Oh, that's actually a little bit rough. Huh. Oh, there's a Stalker out here. I'm not gonna show where my Reapers are going. I really want this to be a surprise. Um, okay, I'm just gonna have to cancel that SCV, which is a little bit painful. But it is what it is. So he has two stalkers. Probably a battery in the main if I had to guess. Wait, so he actually... He has two gateways. That's kind of surprising. Not quite sure what that is about. Okay. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Uh, what am I gonna do here? Banshee makes the most sense. But I have been playing a little Banshee already. I think I'm actually just gonna go for Raven. His build is actually a little bit weird. I'm not quite sure what the double gate is supposed to be. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is that he did write Hello YouTube at the start. So I'm not sure if he's expecting like something really crazy because this is a, you know, a recorded video or something. He's also bringing probes with his attack. Is he also uh, doing some kind of YouTube challenge? I guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, this is actually really good for us. That's going to be a stalker dying most likely. There we go. Oh, actually, didn't die. Oh, now it's gonna die. Can I save it? <gasps> no freaking... It's 1 HP, literally. How is that even possible? I guess uh, sometimes I do truly have plot armor. Good to know. There's nothing wrong with plot armor as long as it's on your side, I suppose. Let's see, let's get a Cyclone lock on. No, okay. Yeah, the thing is with um, Cyclones against Stalkers, you need to be super careful because they uh, do extra damage to the Cyclone and the Cyclone dies super, super fast. Now, the Cyclone is normally... 
Not super useful against Blink Stalkers, but here it might be. Uh, because from his build, it kind of seems like he wants to do a heavy pressure. And a Raven Cyclone combination is going to be super, super good at sniping observers, right? So he should theoretically never be able to blink into my main. Unless he just YOLOs it and, you know, without really seeing what's in my main, decides to jump on it. Which could be pretty strong. But I'm going to have this one tank ready at least. No, I think ideally I end this game with a fast attack. I think Trigger has a little bit of a scary macro style to play against. That I do know. I do know that he likes to play low gases, make a lot of zealots, and then hit like a super strong timing. Um, and I'm going to have to trust him that he's really good at it, because that's what he usually does. I do have two siege tanks, so I'm going to definitely gonna be preparing for a stronger push here. And this, I can't actually read from the amount of units he has what kind of pressure it was. I think it was at least like eight stalkers that was there, which is a lot, because I already killed two. I wanted to say three, but I think it's two that I killed so far. Now, is it a point, a time for me to send out my... Like, an observer is definitely here. I'm just, I haven't seen it yet. Should I move around with my raven a little bit, or is that too risky? I guess we'll see soon enough. Now, I do have one move that I really like to do. I think I've done that move before. And it's basically just the sneaky double medevac drop. Though, I actually got known for this after using this too many times. And I think it might not actually come as a surprise anymore if I do it. Basically, what I like to do is send my medevac all the way around the map. Uh, and then hit at the same time at the front. So, if they're not prepared on either side, they either, either lose the third base or they lose the main base. And if I macro well enough or multitask well enough, I should be able to pull the side back um, where he has the most defenses. Now, there's the observer. He was being very careful with that observer, actually. But that makes sense. Probably because I had the cyclone, actually, I think. Let's see if I can find it here. Can I lock on? How does that? How is that not in range? Oh, that's a scam. That should be... Come on, that's in range, guys. Let's be honest. How is that not in range? Well, I know his observer is there, so he doesn't see my uh, thingy. But it's actually... It really surprises me that that's not in range. I'm actually gonna YOLO it here. Oh, no! That's the wrong button! Oh, no. That is not really not what I wanted to do. I just wasted 75 Raven energy on that. I'm actually not quite sure what button I pressed even to make that happen. Uh, it's also it's just the same one. Oh, I actually didn't know. I actually forgot about that. I mean, obviously I know the hotkeys. I never thought about the fact that Interference Matrix is the same hotkey as Lock-On, though. I was trying to just Lock-On with my Cyclone, but I didn't realize that my Raven had the priority. So that is gonna cost me a lot, guys. That, if there's two Colossus, I wouldn't be able to Matrix them both anymore, which really sucks. I'm just gonna stim forward here. Cyclone actually gonna do a little bit of work here by locking onto the units from afar. Gonna have to get a few extra gateways. Now let's see what he has. Probably Colossus if I had to guess. Okay, so there's he was ready for that attack. Well done by him. Now let's see if there's anything else I can target. Prism in the main. It's a classic move. And now I'm just gonna have to um, yeah, be very clean here. Let's drop a few auto turrets. My units are not here yet, guys. That's very rough. The units from my drop did not arrive in time. Uh, which means that this is going to be a very hard fight. But they're coming in now. Here we go. I think we might already have lost this battle, though, to be fair. This does not look quite good enough for me, I think. Oh, I'm actually going to get the second Immortal. And the Zealots are kind of coming in, uh, you know, piecemeal, one by one. Okay. Now I'm going to have to fly away. I'm pretty sure he did blink, so that is good. Let's kill the prism here. But yeah, definitely a very rough uh, situation for us here, guys. Not sure if we're going to be able to recover from that. Though I did kill most of his army. Protoss always has more production at this point in the game, though. So I don't think it matters that I kill this army. I did also uh, lose the raven in the process. And just, you know, if I had not used that interference matrix, I might also have had two more turrets. And that would have been huge. Oh, let's actually stim on top of these. They're very fast, but I yeah, should be able to catch at least one, which is always nice. And we're going to keep two Widow Mines burrowed there, because he's undoubtedly going to try to come back. I know my Protoss players, guys. They're going to try and come back. Um, how can I come back now into this game? Because I, I would say we're definitely quite far behind. Actually, in that fight, if my drop synced up a little bit faster, if I didn't keep those waiting, we might have been able to uh, do a lot of damage there. There's one Stalker down. Actually, a lot of stalkers going down, and my mines are going to shoot the zealots. Very nice. Let's see. I don't know what he has there. Let's see. He has a, some archons. Does he have anything up this ramp? 
Doesn't seem like he has too much, actually. This gonna be, I think I already killed a bunch of Stalkers before the fight even started. Okay, there's something in my natural... Ah, it's the War Prism. Well done by him. Let's try to kill these Stalkers while he's not looking. Didn't quite work out, out for me, but I tried. And then maybe I can get some damage. No, I can't. He's paying too much attention. Hate it when my opponents play well. It's so annoying, guys, I'm telling you. Okay, ooh, yeah, that's definitely too much. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to dip here. I hope he targets the wrong one. Ooh, yeah, that's super lucky by him there. Uh, I don't think he could actually see, you know, in which medivacs I picked it up, but he targeted the right one. It also happened to be in the back, so... Uh, yeah, not looking too great. I think I'm gonna have to do something more drastic, like trying to drop uh, these Widow Mines. And maybe make some Ghost to end the game. Oh, he's actually attacking me, so that's gonna be a rough decision to have made. Let's pull these back here. And I'm going to have to pull in the SCVs as well. Trying to target the uh, units there. But I think he might have a little bit too much. The whole position is doing wonders for me though. Please get into the freaking bunker. Okay, trying to multitask. All of this is definitely a little bit rough. But maybe it's going to be the same for him. Once I come in with this Widowmine drop. It does look like he's going to lose a lot of probes. I'm trying to target fire the best I can. And I'm going to get a few more Zealots for free. Which is fantastic. Okay, there we go. Well, not quite for free because he's killing a lot in the process. Let me just kill that immortal. And then go and defend my main. Now, this is the problem with uh, with dealing with Protoss in these scenarios. War Prism in the main is usually just a game-ending move. Uh, because Terran reinforcements can't kill the army that a Prism can spawn, basically. A Prism can spawn a small army, I guess you could call it. And uh, your reinforcements are never going to be enough to deal with it. I'm trying to... Do Come here. <laughs> oh, he's actually got... Maybe he could lose the prism? Oh, that's actually beautiful. Okay, didn't expect that one. Very nice. Now, I think we have one more chance to win this game. Uh, and that is just to make a bunch of ghosts and do a massive SCV pool. Uh, and if we don't win with that, then that is going to be the end of the show. Which is also going to make this a very short episode. Or maybe I should play a bonus game just for the memes. Because it does feel a bit weird to post a... You know, 10 minute episode on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, TVP was always my weakness. And I guess it showed here once again. Uh, very unconvincing gameplay by me, I guess you could say. Oh, he does have Storm too. Yeah, even deader than I thought. Maybe those can pop off, no? Actually, I do. Actually, this could be possible. Because I do have Ghosts now. So I'm going to keep these on the high ground. And here we go. I got all of them besides one. No, now I did actually get all of them. So he's going to have to turn them all into Archons. And we have a pretty big army advantage until the Archons are ready, I want to say. Gonna pull my SCVs into the fight. Don't... I mean, this is the best fight I could have ever, ta ever taken. Don't think it is gonna matter, though. Uh, and that is gonna be it for how many NA players can we beat in a row. The answer was four. It should have been zero, to be honest, but it's gonna be four. GG, well played. Um... And yeah, what do we do now? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give you guys one bonus game because this is too short of an episode, so let's play another one. Maybe we'll get a rematch and I can uh, set things straight. Let's go. Ah, uh, we didn't get a rematch. We actually got Rocker, which is the cannon rusher from the first episode. I'm pretty sure it's the same person. Um, so yeah, what I'm thinking about from last game is pretty much... I think that TVP, unless you have like a really good understanding, it seems almost impossible to win unless you kind of own them at the start. So in that game, I think I just didn't put enough effort in destroying at the start. Like I feel like in TVP, your standard should be to do a proxy or should be to do some... Um, <laughs> should be to do like a Hellion drop or something like that, you know? Um, because, yeah, in that last game, I think you could see it. Like, I even took some good trades, but if you don't do damage, they just have too much stuff. And that's just kind of how Terran works. Like, Terran has all these tools to do damage early on. And if you don't use them, um, yeah, I guess that's what the game looks like. Like, I really don't think I played much worse uh, than him or worse at all. I just don't think that my strategy was on the right focus. Like, I really needed to do some more damage early on, no matter what it is. And I think double gas is a, bit, a little bit too figured out. It was working really well for me before, but now it's just a little bit too figured out. So I think um, I'm going to have to do something else next time. Now, this is Canaver's guy. This is, I'm actually going to check if he made a pylon, because he. I was expecting that probe to make a pylon, but I didn't see anything. So, that is actually surprising me already. I mean, he might still cannon rush me 100%. Like, I don't trust this guy at all. Freaking uh, cannon rush, man. I mean, even if he cannon rushes me, I'd be fine with it. But I still don't trust him at all. Maybe I can go for the move? 
Nah, wasn't. Actually, what should I do? I want to show you guys a cool build. Okay, since we already lost, I'm going to show you guys a really cool build that you can try to get easy wins against Protoss. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, but sometimes it actually works perfectly. And you can just absolutely obliterate, you know, your uh, your Protoss opponent. So I'm going to go for a reactor first here. And then after that, I'll go for some Hellions. And it's actually going to create a pretty cool timing attack. No, he's just, uh, this actually was low HP. And maybe I should have sent another one. Just going to use a combi here. But he's not paying attention. I'm actually going to switch these. There you go. And then uh, I can probably send one more there. Send one more here. And this SEV. Wait, I... Oh, I sent them both to the same place on accident. Uh, and yeah, this is really annoying about taking your natural here. It's just too far away. So you actually cannot defend it properly without costing an insane amount of money. Now, the reason why I'm following him with this worker... Is because Elsie can recall, and I don't want that. Uh, at least I want him to, you know, be locked up and actually die. So there we go. If he got away after doing all that damage, that would have been a little bit upsetting. Uh, so there we go. And now, what is the next step? I, I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised because, like I said in the last game, it's very important that you counter your opponents in TVP specifically. Like a lot of time, you will get the advice that's like play the race, not the player. Because else you get scared and whatnot. But in TVP, you definitely need to play the player because else you just die. Um, so I'm a little bit surprised I didn't get Cannon Rush. And now I'm not sure what to do. Like, I was already mentally preparing, like, ah, we're going to play against the Cannon Rush, you know. Okay, so check this out, guys. We have six Marines. And then we're going to swap the add ons. So now I'm going to walk across with six Marines. If we catch an Adept, that's even bonus. But then I'm going to rally a few Hellions behind. Uh, the reason why this build is not too popular is because there are Protoss players that make a shield battery blindly. And then, you know, they just defend it. Now, it's not 100% over if they have a battery. What they, what you would do in that case, I will show it if it happens. But it's still uh, an unpleasant situation. So here we go. He could also have taken the, you know, the base in the main on this map. Basically what I did. So there's no battery here. So I'm going to get it uncontested, which is already really good news. And I'm th thinking this is probably Dark Templar, judging from the lack of units that he has. Which makes sense considering his reputation. So he, is, he w I think he warped those in last minute. I'm actually going to make a Raven. Normally, I make... Um, what's it called? Normally, I make a Banshee here. But because he might be going for DTs because he had no units... I'm actually going to go for the Raven instead. Let's see if we can bait another force field. There we go. Oh, that was actually a perfect bait. Didn't get any of my units. And if he keeps warping in sentries, I actually don't mind that at all. Like, that would be perfectly fine for us. Uh, no worries at all. And now I'm going to try. Let's see. So he has another sentry. Oh, he does get that one. And if you have three sentries, I think you can actually permanently force field. So at this point, there's no point anymore in trying to get in here. Uh, but obviously, denying this nexus is going to be massive. And sentries also fight very poorly against Hellions, by the way. So even if this is a real fight, there would be a chance that I win it. Oh, he's actually going to come to the low ground now. Here we go. I'm just going to target all the sentries. That's 100 gas each, by the way, guys. Sentries are actually 100 gas each. So that is obviously a really good trade. And even then, I'm going to kill all of his stalkers, looks like. And two more probes, why not? I'll take all of these probes. I wonder how many probes I already killed. It must be an absolutely insane amount. Now, if you guys don't remember from the last episode, the reason why he asked me to play uh, Zerg is because we played a really long, pretty epic game with my Zerg. Uh, forgot to, hi you know, comment about that and, uh, when he actually mentioned it. But yeah. Also, I played with my random today. My random MMR is like rank 2 in NA for some reason. I got Protoss four times in a row. And I think I won every single game. And now my random MMR is almost 6.5k. So, Because I got so much MMR from like the provisional placement games, right? That I'm actually straight up 6.5k MMR with my random. Which is actually my Protoss because I only got Protoss. Now, how can I finish this game at this point? Like, I'm obviously pretty far ahead from that start. I didn't kill all of us. It's actually surprising he had a sentry. Normally in that situation, I would be able to walk straight through and just kill in the main base. Right now, I did lose all of my units for denying his base. Though the sentries make me believe he might have gone for a fast third nexus here. So I'm not quite sure what the situation is. It could be that he's either, you know, he has a really good amount of tech. Maybe he has a Colossus out or a Disruptor or something. It could also be that he has a really good economy, but no army. In which case, I should really be attacking. Um, I think I'm just going to go with my first two medivacs and see. I could always go for the mule tactic, trying to mine out the back base over here. Though I need two mules for it, and I don't actually have energy for it right now. If only I thought about that a little bit sooner, it would have been uh, cool to try. 
Now, an important thing with Terran is that you always use the momentum that you have. So if you're ahead, you don't usually want to sit back and let it go to like a longer game. Usually you want to make use of your advantage and just go for it. Sometimes if the opponent sees your army like that, they might even GG because they know they were being greedy and they can't hold your follow-up attack. And that is what Terran is really good at here. Now let's see what he has. Okay, so he went for Zella. I'm very happy to see that. That is like the most pleasant thing I could have seen because check this out. I can drop an anti-armor missile and now all of his zealots are going to be weak. He, he overcharged the battery on the front, target down immediately. And this was just a horrible fight for him. He lost the battery overcharge and I... Oh, that's a really good force wheel though. Credit where credit is due. That's fantastic. That, uh, you know, that actually changed the fight from being the worst ever to pretty decent. But yeah, he just didn't have enough stuff here. I'm going to be clearing about his probes. And that is going to be it. Now, we did lose our streak. Oh, we actually had the gold, the gold base instead of the back base. Wow, that is actually pretty cool. Check this out. So he probably, he probably was intending on taking it way faster, right? Yeah, he took it really fast and then he wanted to defend with sentries. All right. You know, I really dig this strategy. This is really cool. I think it's really unfortunate that I went for this timing attack that I did. Because uh, obviously I was going to be pretty far ahead after this. I do wonder what his income was at that point though. Let's check it out. His income was... Yeah, even after all the damage, it looks like it's almost even. I have a little bit more, but it's pretty even. Uh, but yeah, obviously he didn't have enough army. But this definitely proves my point. You know, upgrades, charge, robo bay, plus gold. If I left him alone, he would have come back into this base. So the momentum was very important. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. It was a short one. I just wanted to play an extra game, so I didn't upload, you know, just a 12-minute video. Hope you guys still enjoyed it. If you guys want me to try something like this in the future again, let me know. I think I might do a Zerg and a Protoss edition as well. You know, secretly trying to get that Zerg and Protoss content in there. Anyway, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.